That is a new Australian record. She's added seven centimetres to her PB tonight. How much higher can she go? Four metres 82, the highest pole vault by an Australian female in history. Nina Kennedy, new Australian record holder. Uh, she has flown higher than any Australian uh, woman pole vaulter in history, 4.82 metres. Nita Kennedy is our special guest. Welcome, congratulations uh, on that amazing leap. And weren't you uh, happy about it as you came in for the landing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. I um yeah, super stoked with that. As you can see, as I fell over my feet on the mat, super embarrassing. But yeah, very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I should just point out that while while you may have gone past uh, Alana Boyd's mark, uh, the poles, her poles still hold the record because that's what you were using, wasn't it? Yeah, I, um, you know, in my off season, I kind of like ran out of poles and um, we messaged her and I was like, hey, can I borrow some poles? And she sent them over. So, yeah, her poles, her record, it's um, they're now mine. <laughs> you just quickly said there that Alana sent her poles over. What does that entail? Um, so we have like pole bag, probably like eight fit in there. And um, on the plane from Brisbane to Perth, um, yeah, that's how we travel. It's, right. it's super annoying. So they don't fit in the overhead luggage compartment, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> way, too, way, too, way too long, way too long. I have to ask you, so obviously we had lockdown and really difficult, mentally challenging for a lot of people and athletes in their preparation, yeah. but you said it was a, a great welcome break. So what changed for you? Oh, like, I love having a break from training, right? Like, I didn't have to go to training. <laughs> it was... It, <laughs> it was epic no but in all seriousness it was kind of just like a nice time to reflect like you know the olympics had been pushed back a year and like mentally i was like okay well i have like another year you know to prepare right so i can be better so um yeah in hindsight i think it was a good thing we constantly show on the on the program uh times when pole vaults don't go well and for your amateur and your people starting out it's always the most terrifying of sports does that fear extend to the top level that the to, to something you've got to overcome like yes and no you know we practice it day in day out so no but you know my training partner Curtis Marshall he had a fall maybe like a year ago and came from like six meters down broke both his feet because oh, he didn't oh. land on the mat so like, there is an element of it, but, I, yeah, I try not to think about it too much. Nina, what is your goals and expectations for the Olympics? How's preparation going? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going well. You know, it's, good. it's going as well as it, you know, can be in this, like, corona time, right? You know, we can't really go overseas to compete. You know, there's so much uncertainty. But, um, yeah, it's going well. Um, goals, I would love to medal. Like, seriously, you know, all you know, Olympic athletes go there to medal. So, um, yeah, I'd love to walk away with one. Well, 4.82, you are in the medal race. Can you, you, Crash was talking about when it goes wrong with the pole vault. Can you tell us, and with that jump with 4.82, when you're in a zone, um, do you yeah. just, is, does everything, is just everything working in sync? Is it just you know you're going to jump well on the night? yeah you know like lots of athletes like basketballers especially they kind of like talk about this flow state like when I cleared 482 I was at the end of the runway and I just knew I was going to do it so um yeah you really have to tap into it it doesn't happen often but when you do and you know you're going to clear it it's um it's a good feeling so if you know you're going to clear it with those and you know when you're in the zone what about these people? Do you think they wouldn't have known they were in the zone? Uh, as we can just see. Because <laughs> <laughs> it oh, just get hit in the face with their own pole is, is terrific. Have you broken a pole, Nina? Have you ever broken one? And our favourite. Oh. <laughs> have you broken that a pole? That's so funny. <laughs> um, I've broken one pole and it was just like so ironic. So at the athletic stadium here in Perth, 
um, in the off season, like the Eagles and Dockers trained there. So the only time I broke a pole was when the Eagles were training and I was like so embarrassed. But, um, yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah. your one chance to impress yeah. and you've broken yeah. the pole. Speaking I know. Of, you were very impressive. Obviously, you had your, your vaccination, uh, you know, before you head to Tokyo. That would have been a tough thing for you yeah. because I understand needles aren't your thing. <sighs> Oh, my God. Look, that was totally off the record, but somehow it slipped into the article. But, um, yeah, I didn't faint, and it was all okay. <laughs> uh, so expectations uh, of you, how much pressure are we going to put on you? We saw that story early with Naomi Osaka in terms of that pressure that athletes yeah. are under. Do you relate to that at all? Um, look, yes and no. Obviously, like, tennis is, like, the biggest sport in the world. You know, I don't have... I don't compare to that at all, obviously, but um, I can definitely tr- like relate to, you know, what she's feeling in terms of like the anxiety and the depression and, you know, the actual fear of talking to the media and, you know, getting misquoted and the pressure it's, um, yeah, I think still with a lot like of mental health issues and um, yeah, I totally feel for her. And, you know, I hope this kind of situation can shine light on how, you know, athletes actually feel right. What happens now? What's the process before from here to Tokyo? And do you know what's happening when you're in Tokyo? Um, yes and no. So going up to Brisbane for like two months before just to get some hot weather and some training camps and then competitions. And then I think we're flying in about five days before I compete. And then 48 hours after I finish, we're like straight out of there into quarantine. So um, pretty hectic, but it has to be done. All right. you. I think it was a PB by, what, seven centimetres last time around. Can you go high? Can you get yourself a medal in, in Tokyo? Look, I really, really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant answer. Congratulations <laughs> so far. And we'll follow with great interest. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, guys. Absolute pleasure there. What an absolute champion. Speaking of which, our champ of the week is next. Stick around.